Princess Rapunzel and Flynn Rider were visiting their friends at the Snuggly Duckling. Rapunzel was learning how to play the piano from hook hand. Flynn was learning interior design. He was less excited than Rapunzel. A little to the right, Gunther said. The right? Really? Flynn asked as he moved a vase. Suddenly, the door flew open. It was the noble horse Max, followed by two royal guards. Max sadly held up a wanted poster in his mouth. He had a picture of Flynn. Anyone else getting a sense of déjà vu? Flynn asked. It looks like they think you stole my tiara again, Rapunzel said, as she read the warrant for Flynn's arrest. What? I didn't do anything. Why does everyone always think it's me? Flynn said. Rapunzel just looked at him. Well, I guess they might have a few reasons, Flynn said. The guards explained that late the night before, someone who looked just like Flynn had sneaked into the castle and stolen Rapunzel's tiara, right from underneath the guards' noses. There were witnesses all over town who said they had seen Flynn running away from the scene of the crime. The guards had no choice but to arrest Flynn. Don't worry, Rapunzel said. We'll clear this whole thing up. You'll be back to interior designing in no time. Hurry, Flynn said as the guards led him away. And don't let Gunther move the vase. The door shut behind Max, the guards and Flynn. What are we going to do? Hukan asked Rapunzel. Rapunzel looked at all her friends in the Snuggly Duckling. She was worried. She knew Flynn hadn't stolen the tiara, but she would have to prove it. Let's go back to town. It's time to investigate, Rapunzel said. Later that day, Rapunzel and her friends reached Corona and questioned the townspeople. The town was abuzz with news and theories about the theft of the Sierra. I heard that Flynn Rider stole it to give it to a princess from a faraway land, a shoekeeper told Bruiser. Oh, please, said Rapunzel. A baker said that he had heard Flynn was trading a tiara for his freedom from an evil magician. And a gardener said that Flynn was going to use a tiara to buy a ship and sail far, far away. He'd never do that, Rapunzel said. He hates sailing. Many people swore they had seen Flynn the night before. The librarian had spotted Flynn sneaking around the paint shop. The sailor was sure he'd seen Flynn down by the docks. But how did you know it was him? Rapunzel asked. The thief was wearing a green vest, just like Flynn always wears. The sailor said, matter of factly. Besides, he's stolen the tiara before. But he couldn't have been at the paint shop and the docks. They're on the opposite sides of town, and there aren't two Flynns, Rapunzel said. Plus, the last time he stole the tiara, he had help. Rapunzel turned to her friends. She was starting to suspect who might really be behind the theft. But to clear Flynn's name, they would have to catch the true criminal. I think I have a plan, Rapunzel said, drawing everyone into a tight huddle. Now, listen closely. Rapunzel and her friends rushed to the castle to tell the king and queen her plan. First, I need the royal messengers to tell the town we're moving all the royal jewels to the throne room to protect them, Rapunzel said. Then I need you to send Max and all his guards on an important mission out of town. But then everyone will know that the castle and the jewels are undefended, said the king and queen together. Exactly, Rapunzel smiled. The sun began to set, and the townspeople watched in amazement as Max led all of his guards out of the city gates. They must be going to find the princess Tiara, the gardener told the town librarian. 
the royal messengers told everyone that the kingdom's jewels had all been moved to the castle's throne room. With everything in one place, the precious treasure would be easier to protect, especially from evil magicians, the baker told the gardener. Soon, it was time for everyone in the castle to go to sleep. It had been a long, eventful day, and everyone was tired. Without any of the guards in the castle, there was no one to notice two shadowy figures crawling over the roof. And there were no guards to see those two same figures lower a rope into the dark throne room and slowly climb down. The thieves were back to steal the royal jewels. The two people softly landed on the floor of the throne room. They quietly walked toward the center of the room, looking for the royal jewels. But the room was empty. I don't understand, said a gruff voice. Where are all the jewels? Suddenly, the room was full of light. Rapunzel and her friends ran out of hiding. It had been a trap all along. In the harsh light of her lantern, Rapunzel saw that the figures were dressed in matching green vests, just like Flint's. But she wasn't fooled for a moment. As Attila and Hookhand restrained the criminals, Rapunzel removed their brown wigs to reveal the Stabbington brothers. How did you know we'd be here? The Stabbington brothers asked Rapunzel. I knew that the idea of getting more jewels would be too tempting for you to pass up, Rapunzel said. Especially when you had seen all the guards leave the city. You didn't know that I had a scary group of thugs to help me out. Rapunzel explained to her friends how the Stabbington brothers had disguised themselves as Flynn to hide their true identities. That was why the townspeople had seen Flynn in so many different places. There had been two of them. We knew that you would get to the bottom of this, Rapunzel, the queen said, giving her daughter a hug. Rapunzel smiled. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have some business in the dungeon. With Flynn's name cleared, Max and Rapunzel personally freed him from jail. I left the room warm for you, Flynn told the Stabbington brothers as Hook Hand and Vladimir locked them up. Now, there was only one mystery left to solve. Where is my tiara? Rapunzel asked the Stabbington brothers. I can get my frying pan if I have to. Boys, I'd be careful, Flynn said. You do not want to be on the wrong end of Rapunzel's frying pan. Believe me, I know. It's right here, said one of the brothers, pulling the tiara from beneath his vest. After we stole all the jewels, we were planning to go to the docks and sail away to a faraway land. Not anymore, Flynn said, as he took the tiara and placed it on Rapunzel's head. That's better. To celebrate solving the mystery, everyone went back to the Snuggly Duckling for a welcome back party. Be honest, you were a little nervous, Rapunzel said to Flynn. Me? Nervous? Never. I'm Flynn Rider. I've sailed to distant lands to see fair princesses and battle evil magicians. Adventure is my life, Flynn said with a wink. Good thing, too, Gunther said, because you're a terrible interior designer. Rapunzel laughed. It was good to be among friends. <laughs>